So we are today going to make tzatziki and flatbreads. Now Dot was very worried because she said, doesn't everyone know how to make tzatziki? Um, and it's all well, some people do, but we're going to show you the super, super easy way to do both of these things that hopefully you'll be able to share with all of your families um, and wow them. And in less than an hour, you're going to have flatbreads and tzatziki ready to go. Now, last time, there are a couple of questions about um, ingredients. So what I've done in the chat is written the list of ingredients right up at the beginning. Um, somebody very helpfully posted that in the chat for us last week, which was brilliant. Um, but so just in case you've um, missed them or you haven't put out your ingredients yet, gather them up together. And there was one question about what 0.25 means. Um, it means one quarter of a teaspoon. It does. So just in case you're a bit confused about that, it doesn't mean 25 teaspoons. <laughs> it means 0.25, which means a quarter of a teaspoon. Okay. Right. Has everyone washed their hands? Everyone got their aprons on? Should we get cooking? Quarter. Quarter. Right. First thing we're going to do is make our flatbread dough because we want it to be <laughs> for a minute. That's Stan. There must be somebody at the door. <laughs> quick easy way of doing that so if you've ever cooked with us before you know that chef trick already now what's next Wait, is there another so that we kept to the side a little bit of extra flour um, you might need that you might not so don't panic um, you might need it for, for kneading it you might need it for kneading it see what I did there the next thing you thought was terrible. Yeah, sorry, can I just ask a quick question? Yeah. Sorry, did you say the baking powder is only for plain flour? Yeah, so you don't need baking powder. It's not. No. Baking powder. It's just that if you don't have self-raising flour, you can use plain flour or baking powder. With a bit of baking powder, and that equals self-raising flour. Yeah. Um. For the salt, should we just use fine salt? Exactly, sweetheart. A quarter of a teaspoon of fine salt. Now, okay, thank got you. Lakia Malden sea salt, so her quarter of a teaspoon was a little bit bigger, and I might add a little pinch more. 
But yes, fine running or table salt, it's sometimes called. Okay, so once you get on, you shall put in your wonderful 250 grams of Greek yogurt. Now in the recipe as well, you might have noticed um, that it says 250 grams or 250 mils, milliliters. And the reason for that is that it's basically the same thing. So when it comes to liquids, particularly something like double cream um, or heavy cream if you're in the US, um, water, orange juice, anything like that, 250 milliliters almost always comes near to, to 250 grams. So don't worry too much about that. If it's a powder, then it's different. But liquids, you can measure out almost exactly the same. Great, do you need a, uh -huh, our favorite tool. Do you need that to try and get out the last little bit of the yogurt there? Yeah. Thank you so much, Roy. Got one more person arriving. Do you know it's one more? Maybe there's a ton more. It's true. Before we let them in, I wonder how many people are actually coming. <laughs> Here. So it just says they're joining now. It's a couple minutes late. Who is it? I don't know who it is. But it says that there's somebody else joining. Okay. Do you want to use your knife to mix it in together? Sure. Yeah? Just try not. Shall I, shall I take your stuff out of the way, your dirty things? Yeah? Try and be a glamorous assistant over here. So you're going to mix it around with your knife or something or something or something or something. <laughs> a knife is a good thing to mix it with. I know it looks a bit weird, but just to recap, what have we got in there? Flour, salt and good yogurt. Flour, self-raising, or plain and baking powder, if you don't have self-raising, 250 grams. And then 250 mils of Greek yogurt and salt. I think not quite yet. And then what we've done is mixing it, to, what we're doing is mixing it together with a knife, not a really sharp chef knife, but just a table knife, because it helps to cut through the flour and the yogurt and it will start to get sticky and gluey and cl clump together. But there's still a bit of flour at the bottom. You there. will find a bit of flour at the bottom. So it's a nice way to start the mixing, but then you might find that actually what you would like to do is use a spoon again um, to make sure that you get as much as possible off the edges of the bowl. Now, we've used a glass bowl again so that you can get a pretty good view. I think the flowers cover it. That's fine. Well, I tell you what, do you want to show them? Do you want to take it up to the camera and show them what it looks like? So don't panic if it's looking like this, guys. Oz isn't looking so good at the moment. It doesn't look very appetizing. It doesn't look very appetizing. Actually, um, there was a good friend of ours who's a chef who's just done one of these whose son kept saying, oh, it's disgusting. <laughs> it's, it does look a little bit disgusting, but I promise you it's going to be amazing in the end. So do you see how it's starting to clump together nicely and it's starting to pull away from the sides, but you'll still find that there's a fair bit of flour in the bottom of the bowl. So just keep going until you get a nice soft dough together. That's looking pretty good, Dot. All right. And then what we want to do is make sure that we've caught all of the flour from the bottom. And the truth is, the only way to really do that is to give it a bit of welly. <laughs> And mix it in. Could I see who else is going? Because at the moment we can only see four people. Yeah, we can only see four people because there's only four people across the top, unless you do gallery view. But then, if we do it in a different view to gallery, to then I won't be spotted. Yeah, and then it's hard for you to see what what your students can see. So, do you see what I've got here, Doc? That's now looking. Much more uniform, isn't it? Should we show them again? 
So now our dough is looking like that. And it's really come away from the bottom of the bowl and it's this lovely, sticky, gloopy mess, but it's definitely a whole big ball. Okay. What we're going to do now is knead it a little bit. And for that, we're going to knead what the yeah, immaculately clean hands. That's why it's important to wash your hands because then, whilst you're listening to us, then you'll have to go over to the sink and wash your hands and for 20 seconds. And then by that time, we're probably going to be moved on to something else and then you're going to forget it. And that's not good, is it? Disaster. Culinary oh, no, disaster. Okay, fantastic. So, the one thing that we don't want to do though is add too much flour into this mix because the more flour that you add in order to stop it from sticking to the floor or the sand that you're working on, then the more tough it's going to become. And what we want is nice, light, soft flatbreads. Okay? So Dot's gonna take this ball out, but I'm going to sprinkle on the surface before she does that. You want to get those teaspoon measures out of the way so you've got plenty of room to work. Are you going to go sideways? That's fine. Doing some chefy scattering of flour here. Who's the chef? She knows what she's doing. Yeah, but anyone can do this. It just looks really fancy. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Lost the magic. <laughs> so. Once you've got a nice even scattering, not too many big clumps. Sorry, was that self-raising flour you used on the board or plain? Plain flour that you used to start with, yeah. Okay, oh. thanks. Brilliant. Feels like cotton wool. Feels like cotton wool. I bet it feels a bit stickier than cotton wool. Yeah, much stickier than cotton so wool. So don't worry if it feels sticky, and you're going to end up with plenty of this on your fingers. And you just want to sort of fold it and turn it. Yeah, don't worry. We've got a very clever gadget called the dough scraper. If you have one of these, you can go and get one. If you don't, don't worry. If you're doing it on a marble or a shiny surface, you'll find this easier to do than doing it on a wooden surface because a wooden surface is much more porous. And sticky. Yeah, which then makes it sticky. So I'm going to sprinkle. Don't worry, guys. You're going to get a wonderful, marvellous mess. And it's really, it's really fun to do this and get your hands stuck in. Try and imagine all the things that you want to do to your most hated teacher who set you extra homework, even though all of your work is at home. And, and imagine that teacher and then take it out on her with this dough, okay? So we're going to... Scrape a little bit and flop it over and then fold it, gently fold it. You're so much better, you make it look so easy. Oh, well, I've been doing it a while. <laughs> and also your fingers are all sticky. So if your fingers have got so sticky that you're just getting stuck constantly to the dough, dip them in some flour and start again. Yes, you can rub them in the flour. And then if you put your fingers in the flour and then you can rub your hands together to try and get all the little bits of dough off your fingers and back onto the main ball of dough. Do you want me to help? Yeah? If you just sort of tickle them so that all the little bits rub off. There you go. Perfect. It's still a bit on my fingers. Don't worry. And when you get used to working with dough like this, you can start getting a bit fancy and instead of using flour, you can use olive oil um, to stop your fingers from sticking. And that ends up being a really lovely, light dough. So as soon as it starts to stick a bit more, get a little, just a tiny little bit more flour on your fingers. And what we're doing is just gently folding and squashing and turning. Fold, squash, Lift and turn. Fold, squash, oh, sticking again. Give it a scrape and put a little bit more flour underneath. And don't worry, gang, everyone 
will find this varying in difficulty. But the trick is to try to keep your fingers relatively unsticky. So if you feel like you've got so much dough all stuck to your fingers and you just think it's too hard, zip off, wash your hands, dry them really well, and start again with really dry fingers that have got a bit of flour on them. And what you want to do is end up with a dough that starts to feel like it's just very, very gently pushing back at you and forming more of a ball. That's perfect, Doc. Do you want to keep going, sweetheart? Oh, I think you're great. You did this fantastically with pizza dough the other day. But this dough is very soft. So, although you might hate, oh, that's brilliant. Look, you've made a sort of face in there. Oh my God, look, 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 should we show them? Look. It looks like a devil. It looks like a sort of ghosty, horrible face. Ugh. <laughs> but do you see how now that is a kind of ball, you know? It's not, it's not super tough. Um, it's very soft. It feels like it could flop away, but it is definitely a ball and not just a sticky mess. Okay. I'm just going to add the tiniest bit more. That's a good job getting it off your fingers. Yeah? Now it's getting crusty on my fingers. Yeah, it will do. So it might be that you want to just go and wash your hands, sweetheart. Yeah. To get ready for the next bit, because you're a bit of an expert at the next bit, aren't you? Once you feel like it started to take the shape of a, a ball, you'll realise that as you work it, the more you work it, it starts to just get sticky again. At that point, just stop. So when you've got a ball shape that sort of holds its, its own shape, you can stop kneading. But you still need to get all those bits that I've just got to knock my hand. So I'm not going to add those bits that you've just got off your hand into the dough. Do you know why? Because they need to be a bit dirty. No, I'm not worried about them being dirty, but it might add a little bit of sort of crusty crispiness. Ooh, very nice. Very, very nice. All those doughs look fantastic. Who else have we got? Does anybody else want to hold up their dough and see? Oh, great, Mabel, that looks fabulous. Yeah, are you all feeling good about them? Yeah, love it. Really, really nice. Oh, <laughs> fantastic. Fabulous. So if you've got any questions or you're worried about it, or you feel like it's not going the way you want it to, go ahead and hit the space bar if you've got a computer and jump in and ask a question or pop it in the chat messages. Okay, but that is all looking amazing. We've even got this being made in New York. Hi. <laughs> oh, oh, there you go. Very fancy, very fancy, Mrs. Turley. I <laughs> love it. Okay, so once you've got your ball, put it somewhere clean on a little bit of extra flour so it doesn't stick to the surface. We're not gonna leave it for very long, so it doesn't really need to be covered, but we're just gonna pop it to the side for a minute and then clear down, not all of the mess you can leave it a little bit floury because we're going to squash it out in a bit but try and remove all of the bits that are sort of dry and crusty so that we don't end up with them getting mixed back into our nice soft dough okay so i'm just going to move those aside if you've got a dough scraper this is magic it means that you can literally scrape the dough off your surface. It's trickier to use it on your hands than it no, it works for hands. <laughs> Unfortunately, your hands aren't a completely flat surface, so it's a little bit trickier. Um, and then do me a favour and try not to get flour all over your kitchen floor, or your parents are going to have a complete meltdown and never let you do classes with dot again. That wouldn't be good. It wouldn't be good, would it? Yeah. So, 
We've, we've got our dough sitting to the side, waiting patiently, and that's just going to rest. So it's just going to relax and sort of think about the world for about 15 minutes while we make our tzatziki. So, Doc, do you want to let them know while I go and wash my hands, let them know what they're going to need to make the tzatziki? Look, show them how amazing that is. So, Dot, just by rubbing her hands together, she's got rid of almost all of the little bits of sticky dough, um, which I could do, but I can't be bothered to do that now because I've just cleaned the surface. So I'm going to go and wash my hands properly. Um, and then she's going to gather up the, the next bits and pieces. She'll let you know what you need for your tzatziki. So, for your tzatziki. Can you just hold on two sets while we go and wash our hands? <laughs> You can sing them a song, Doc. Oh yeah, do a little dance. Brilliant. <laughs> Doing the cucumber and garlic dance. So, I imagine you will ha all have all your ingredients ready and beside you. Are you just imagining that or you're hoping? I'm hoping. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Um, Ta-da! Clean hands. That's your turn. I need to wash my hands. Oh, you're going now. Oh God, does that mean I've got to do the cucumber garlic dance <laughs> while you're while you're gone? <laughs> okay. All right. Cucumber garlic dance while Dot washes her hands. A bit, little bit of cucumber garlic dance over here while Dot washes her hands. Can you hurry up? Because I look like a complete idiot. <laughs> Hi. All right. Who's the star of the show anyway? You keep abandoning me. <laughs> right. Cucumber. Garlic. Now Dot was very excited. I'm gonna, can I show them this while you wash your hands? Yeah, sure. She said we well, said one clove of garlic, but as she's quite rightly pointed out, not all cloves are made the same. And this is one cl one clove of garlic, right? Everyone agree that's one clove? It's actually not. It's two cloves. It's like one clove had a baby and stuck together. It's all good. Depending on how garlicky you like things, that's how much garlic you want. So some people don't like garlic at all, especially not when it's raw. Leave it out if you're not, if you're not a big fan. I no big deal. Garlic. No judgment from here. Well, garlic is one of my favorite things. So unfortunately. It is. Unfortunately. And garlic has literally magic healing properties. So it's anti-inflammatory. It's, it's fantastic. It's really good for warding away all of the bad germs. So I would highly recommend that you go with garlic. But no judgment, whatever floats your boat. So, after you've gotten all your things. Which are what? What do they need? What do they need? Cucumber. Yep. Greek yogurt. Another thing of it. And Another garlic. Another thing of Greek yogurt. Your clove of garlic. Are we going to use that whole clove? The whole puffy mummy yes. baby clove? Yes. And then you're going to get your magic garlic crusher and your cheese grater. And a bowl, a decent sized bowl, ideally, that you can fit your box grater into. You're going to crush the garlic in first. Fair, fair enough, why not? If you need it, maybe we could put the, the yogurt in. Point is, it doesn't matter. <laughs> totally doesn't matter. I think what we'll do is do the garlic first. So crush your garlic and get that in the bowl. And then what we're going to do is grate the cucumber. I'm gonna leave her, I'm just gonna watch this. <laughs> She's never gonna ask for help, are you? Little Miss Determined. Sorry, can I ask another question? Of course. Yeah. So we don't have any fresh mint, so can we use, I've got, the only thing I've got is mint jelly. Shall I just leave it out? A little bit of sweetness that will come with the jelly is no bad thing, um, especially if you're using, um, so if you're allergic to dairy and you're using maybe a soured coconut milk, a soured coconut yogurt or a goat's yogurt, um, something like a little bit of sugar might help to bring out the flavour of the mint. So you can go and do that, but um, the mint is again totally up, up to you. 
So there are Greeks who swear blind that never in a million years would they ever dream of putting mint in a tzatziki. So the point of this is not necessarily to do something completely authentic, it's to do something that's tasty and that's easy and quick to make. Um, so if you like the flavour of mint for your tzatziki, please go ahead and do it. Dot doesn't like mint in her tzatziki. So, and also my snails that I'm having a battle with at the moment have left me this much mint in my garden. So I'm going to use it as a pretty little garnish and that's about it. Okay, so we've got the garlic crushed and in. Next up. Oh, don't worry. We, we, can, we can save that later. All right, so box grater in and use the large-ish side of your, your grater to grate your cucumber. And the trick to making this quick and easy is that you don't have to, you don't have to peel the cucumber. You grate it with the green on the outside, which also means that you get all that lovely green color. And if you grate it into the bowl, as Dot's doing, you end up catching all of the cucumber juice. But often if you do it on a board, a flat board, you end up with a sort of green swimming pool, which is full of flavor and goodness, but it's very hard to get that into the bowl later. Um, how much cucumber should we cut? So we did, we're doing half the cucumber. So okay. it's approximately 200, 250 grams. Okay. Thank you. I've got a third of a cucumber. No big deal, it just won't be very cucumber. How are you getting on? Really exciting. Really exciting. Oh, don't grate your finger. That would be bad. I didn't grate my finger and bash it. Oh, annoying. Do you want me to get going with the end? I think it's fine because I think that lots of people might find this a little bit difficult. Like for every one person that's out there who's sitting there going, oh, I might go and get gin and tonic now because I'm done, there'll be somebody else going, oh, this is really tricky. So just be patient and we'll get there in the end. I'm going to pop this aside. Yeah, so Doc quite rightly pointed out, by the way, that in her garlic crusher, there's still quite a bit of garlic stuck in there. Don't waste that. You can scoop that out and then chop it up finely, 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 um, and add it in as well. But if you take it out right now, you'll end up with quite a nasty, big sort of slab of, of squashed garlic skin. Very nice. Which person you'd like the least gets it. Okay. Oh, awesome. Nearly there? Yeah. Okay, so get some there. Good, good. Wonderful. Shall I just do that last little bit for you? No. Right. <laughs> <Give it up. laughs> no, you didn't. That's unlikely. <laughs> Don't come up in this house. We just sometimes say <laughs> Oh, the dog's fallen asleep underneath the kitchen counter. He's had a really tough day. <laughs> Having cuddles mm. and kisses, he's just so tired. So, when it starts to get a little bit close to your fingers, stop! And eat it. And eat it. Chef treats. Right. Take anything that you've got to hand and gently wipe off the front of your box grater all of your bits of cucumber. Try not to grate whatever you're using. Very good point. Try not to grate whatever you're using. A metal spoon might be better than a silicon spoon. I mean, what does the chef know? It's Gosh. not even a silicon spoon. It is. It's this little silicon spatula. I love this one. It's not a spoon. So just try and gently wipe off the excess cucumber from the outside. And then, <laughs> give it a good jiggle to make sure that you've got all the cucumber off from the inside as well. Now, 
I would never suggest that you take your hand and run it across the front of the grater because you will grate your hand. However, if you've got a box grater, you can take your hand and reach it inside and wipe the inside of the grater very slowly and carefully and gently and just grab all those last little bits that are stuck on the inside of the grater. Do you want to show them what we've got in our bowl, how it looks? And then, so all you can see right now is the cucumber because all the poor, poor garlic is at stuck the at the bottom. Oh, stuck at the bottom. Yeah. I don't think you can trust me. That's fine. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Standing on a on a stool. So what we've got is um, all, we've managed to capture all of the cucumber and all of the cucumber juice, which is full of lovely flavour. Um, and we've almost, almost managed to not get any cucumber anywhere. So we've also limited the washing up, which is always a win. Right, next up, garlic, cucumber, and yogurt. Yogurt. Do you want to use that one? If there's no yogurt, and it's tzatziki. What's the point in making a tzatziki? I can't, I can't, I've got nothing. Can't argue with that. Now, in the ingredients list that I sent out yesterday on the Zoom class um, link, I said to grab a pretty bowl. If you haven't managed to do that, that doesn't matter. You could have a little think about a small-ish sort of cereal bowl size bowl, something pretty that you could get to put your tzatziki in to present it. It doesn't need to be pretty at all, it can just be in a bowl. It can if you don't have a pretty bowl. Any bowl will look beautiful because of the thing that you're putting in it. She's absolutely right. We've got a really pretty bowl though. We can show it. Yeah we can, we're going to do it. Ta-da! moment at the end. Oh! <laughs> Oh man, <laughs> that's what happens when you don't wear an apron. Mm. <laughs> no sympathy from me. Would you like to see what happens? Oh goodness. Yogurt. She's wearing the tzatziki. <laughs> wearing the tzatziki. I mean there are some people who put most of these ingredients on their face. <laughs> also a winner. Okay, stir it up. So we've got our cucumber, our yogurt, and our garlic. I knew there was another thing. Can you hear that sound? Slippy, sloppy, lovely. The next thing that you need in there is a bit of seasoning. So the most important thing, and there's so many things that are important, so I always say that the most important thing. One of the most important things to do as you're cooking is taste it. Never serve anything to anybody else unless you know what it tastes like. So, oh, that's disgusting. How could you do that? There's a whole thing. <laughs> oh, you did this last week. You ate half of the frosting straight out of the bowl, you mix. Right. Okay. What did you think? Does it need a little bit of salt? I haven't done it. Oh, I thought you just licked your fingers. Ooh. What do you think? Good. Yeah. And then you can put a nice, good, big pinch of salt. Brings out the cucumbery flavour. So salt's like magic if you use it correctly. It's almost like somebody pulling focus on a dish. All of the ingredients feel a little bit blurry, but when you add salt, it sharpens the edges of all of the flavors, and you can taste each one individually. It just makes everything better. But if you put too much in, not so good. Your not brain so good. can go bad sometimes. Your brain can go bad with too much salt? Yeah, yeah let's go with that medical input. <laughs> sure, you can get a bit, a bit ill. You, and then, your throat can go dry. Yeah, no, there's lots of not good things about too much salt. Do we like want, no, don't like pepper. So, chef says no to the pepper. I think a little bit of pepper is lovely. Um, no drama if you don't want the pepper. Um, do you mind just showing us yours? Because we don't know if ours looks right. I know yours looks it right. It doesn't right. really 
the matter what it looks like. Okay. Right. Mixed it all together. All you want to do. Okay. So, kind of like that. Thank you. It's good of you to ask. Mm. Always. Always good to ask, isn't it? Right. And then the tzatziki will set up a little bit. That's a sheppy way of saying gets a little bit firmer. Um, and what we can do is put it in our pretty bowl. That Grandma, my grandma. I was going to say not our grandma, because that would be weird. <laughs> We're not sisters, definitely. Oh, oh, we get asked that all the time, though. <laughs> Are you sisters? All the time. <laughs> right. So, Ziki, into pretty bowl. Can you see the consistency of that? So, ours is a little bit wetter, maybe, than you might because, expect. That's because we used half of the cucumber so that when we did, and our cucumber was quite watery. There was quite, it was quite a juicy, not watery, it was a juicy one, wasn't it? Um, but that's fine. There's no right or wrong, and it's full of flavour. So there's our beautiful, pretty bowl of tzatziki. Can I do this? Can I do that? I actually can. <laughs> right. Splash of olive oil within the ingredients, and that olive oil you're going to use for a couple of things. First thing we're going to use it for is, yes, is the tzatziki. Mm. We're just going to do a lovely, pretty drizzle. And then, oh, looks nearly a heart shape. <gasps> Love wins. Look. Heart shaped olive oil. If I tip it too far, I will dribble. <laughs> Um, and then fancy chefy sprig of mint in the side. Woohoo! What do you think? Good? Yeah. Right. Next are flatbreads. So that, if you don't think you're going to eat that very soon, oh, no, it's stuck. pop it in the fridge and that can sit in the fridge for a good hour or two before you need it. It was a bit stuck, so I just needed to use that. No problem. So do you want to put a little bit of flour on your surface? Yeah. And what we want to do, first thing we want to do before we start attacking our dough again, is get the heat on under our frying pan. So I've got a nice big non-stick frying pan. We're going to do this really slowly and calmly. Anyone got any problems or questions, just hit the space bar and holler. See if you can find the heaviest, biggest non-stick frying pan that you've got in your kitchen. I don't have a non-stick frying pan, but it is very heavy. So it'll be completely fine. You can try doing one, if you do the first one without any oil, and see how sticky it is. And if it sticks too much and you're worried about it burning too much, the next one, scrape off the bits that are stuck to the frying pan with your spatula, which you should also go and get and make sure that you have to hand now, and then put some olive oil in it so that the next one doesn't stick so much. But here's the brilliant thing about these flatbreads, guys. Warn everybody at home that it's going to get smoky because you want them a little bit burnt, okay? You cannot mess these up. If somebody goes, oh, you've got your flatbreads, you can go, no, I did not. That's how they're supposed to look, okay? Yes. Absolutely. So I'm going to put the heat on on my frying pan. You want it to be a gentle heat, not at the lowest setting, but somewhere between the lowest and the middle setting. So I don't know if you can, you probably can't see my flame, so I'm going to show you. Mm. 
that is what my flame looks like okay not great big fierce flame not tiny tiny flame but just somewhere in the middle somewhere that's, in that's the middle too much. okay if you've got a really so this is my biggest burner so i've got it on a quite low one but if you've got um if the nearest burner to you is smaller it will just take a little tiny bit longer to cook but don't worry it's all good so we're going to get the frying pan it doesn't have any oil in it yet we're going to get the frying pan and pop it on the heat now depending on how many people you have in your house that's how many pieces you're going to divide your dough into unless you've only got two of you in which case those would be really really big i would suggest that you divide these into four but if you've got six people in your house then divide them into six we've got four people we're going to use the dough scraper to cut the ball into do you want to do the next one into four pieces you can use a table knife any any knife you like just make sure that if you're cutting on the surface that you don't use a really sharp chef's knife and scratch the wooden surface of um your parents kitchen because that will not go down well you'll find that where you make the cuts it's a bit sticky so grab a little bit of your flour so that it doesn't end up sticking to the counter again grab a little bit of flour and pat it on the sticky sides and then start flattening your pieces down and what we want to do is make very wibbly wobbly organic shapes as soon as it you feel like it's getting too sticky your hands are getting stuck again just gently gently flattening it out so we've got sort of loose triangle shapes which is totally fine if it's starting to get sticky you can just grab a little bit more flour oh can you now so Dorothy is doing very fancy chefy manoeuvre. No idea where she learnt it from. Um, which is basically the way that you would usually make a pizza dough. Oh, nice, I can see everybody doing it. Wait till the parent comes in and sees you doing this. Ooh, chefy pizza dough trick. So you're gently letting it, the weight of the dough, sort of fall slightly to stretch it out. You don't want it super, super thin. Some people roll these out so that they're really thin. If you feel like it's fighting back at you and you can't get it very flat at all, you can do that. You can use a rolling pin, but I don't think it's necessary. Some pizza tricks. <laughs> 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 if you end up with that on the floor, I'm not eating it. And <laughs> yes, we can soak it. Oh! <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> she drops it on the floor, we'll just give it to Daddy. Ladies, <laughs> what? She messed the book on the Oh my gosh, you're such a man. Yeah. Oh no, I have to give yeah. it to the brother. <laughs> right. Is it okay that the pan is still on the hob? That is, nothing's With happening. no oil, no oil in it. No oil in it, nothing is happening. It's just hot and ready, waiting for you. So, if you can see, that is how thick my flatbread is. And if there's holes in your flatbread, uh -huh. you fold the bread over on that. Well, you don't want to fold it over too much because um, you end up with sort of thicker bits and thinner bits. And if you get a hole, leave it. Don't worry about it. It'll look even more glamorous and um, and authentic. Okay, so my piece is looking about that size. So it's about the size of my hand if it's spread out. That's what you're looking for. Um, obviously, don't make it bigger than the bottom of your frying pan. And then I'm going to try my first one without any oil in it. So we're going to see how that goes. I'm going to very carefully walk over to my frying pan and lay it. I'm going to hold it at the top and I'm going to lay it carefully down. Dot, if, dot if you step back so they can see. I'm going to start at the front of it 
and then lay it carefully down and let go before my fingers get anywhere close to the frying pan. Make sure that your handle isn't sticking out over the edge of your, um, your hob so that you accidentally knock it with your hip or your arm. That would not be good. And once it's on, you just leave it. You just let it do its thing. Make sure that you've got something to take it out of the frying pan with though, and a place that is safe to put your hot breads. So I've got over here a flat top, which is just a, an, an area to the left of where I'm cooking. And I've got two pieces of paper towel. Make sure that those two pieces of paper towel that you're using them are nowhere near the flame, but to the side so that they are easy to access. And then make sure that you've got a pair of tongs or a spatula of some kind, ideally a non-stick one if you're using a non-stick pan, in order to flip our flatbreads and then take them out of the frying pan. If you've got your frying pan on a low to medium heat, did you just sneeze all over the bread? No, I oh, need a bit. <laughs> if you've got your frying pan on a low to medium heat, it'll still be going, and that's fine. I've got a nice spatula, some people call this a fish slice. But it's broken. It's silicon, is it broken? No, where's it broken? Oh no, that's just the fancy edge. That's just the fancy edge, it's not actually broken. So mine's looking like a cat head. Yours is looking like a cat head? Mine looks like a heart again, I've obviously got hearts on the brain. So I'm gonna take my spatula and gently lift up the front corner of my flatbread to see how it looks. And I'm gonna do that in front of you so that you can all see. Dot, if you just step to the left, sweetheart. I'm gonna pull this over. It's a little bit smoky. I'm just gonna lift it up. Whoa! Check that out. Yours might not look exactly like that. Don't panic. But if it does, you can lift it up and flip it over straight onto the other side. I'm done. Okay, and then it's going to go back on the heat again for the same amount of time. So that was roughly about three minutes, I'd say, on either side. Now, everybody's hob works differently. Some people have got gas, some people are working on induction. Just check, and whenever you feel like you've got that lovely color, and it's the way that you want it to be, then that's the right time to flip it. It might take two minutes, it might take four minutes, but the key is to do this. Can I just ask what the oven is on for? I don't have my oven on. Oh, sorry. I thought the instruction said to preheat your oven to 180. Just saying. Sorry. <laughs> if you preheated your oven, extra points, go and turn it off. <laughs> no need for oven today. Although it might have been me being really, really clever and suggesting that you have the oven on to keep them warm. Um, but if you've, if you've got your oven on, fantastic. Turn it off so that it's got heat in it um, and you can set them aside and, and put them in your oven when, when, you're, when you're done. So I'm going to pile my four flatbreads up together and then... Um, serve them with my tzatziki. So I think that's been another couple of minutes and I'm gonna check. So dot, watch out the way and then I can show everybody. So what you'll see is that it started to puff up as well, really nicely. And I'm gonna lift it, look at that. Anybody else is starting to look like that? I'm checking as well underneath to make sure that there aren't any bits that look like um, they haven't cooked through. So where there's pockets that look like they're a little bit um, raw uh, or they haven't puffed up, you can just pop it back on the heat for maybe one more minute 
And I might just very gently push down slightly on the area that I think hasn't quite cooked through. But slow and gentle is, is the key with this. That's actually a perfect triangle that we've got. How are we doing over here? Yeah. So the other thing that I would say is that if you don't intend to eat these immediately, having cooked one, you could stop now and then cook the rest when you're ready to eat them. Sound good? Do you want to eat them all now? <laughs> we're doing Greek tonight. Slightly inspired by the fact that obviously we're making some Indian yeah. flatbreads. Um, you said that we're going to do paella. paella. That would not be Greek, would it? What's a paella? Yeah. Spanish. Spanish, you're right. Yeah. Not even a tortilla. Tortilla is also Spanish or Mexican and mean two completely different things. In Spain, a tortilla is uh, like a uh, frittata slash flan. Oh, well done, <laughs> nearly wore that as well. Made with potato and onion and egg. Um, but in Mexico, a tortilla is a flatbread. Very similar, in fact, to what we're making now, but rolled out much more thinly. In fact, it's almost an identical recipe. All right, I think that is looking pretty good. Woohoo! Check that out. Now it should be, don't do this, I'm a chef, I've got asbestos fingers. But when it's cool enough for you to touch it, you should be able to see that that has a little bit of sort of rise to it. It's fluffy, soft, but crisp on the outside. And it's going to be completely delicious with our tzatziki. Ta-da! Big ta-da moment, we need to dart arms. Can you ta-da! <laughs> All right, so we're gonna keep cooking our flatbreads and I think the best thing to do is let you guys carry on um, doing them. But if you're done, if you're done and you don't need any help and you don't need to watch us anymore, it's been lovely to have you. Um, carry on. Um, but if you would like to stick around and watch us cook the last few, if you're not feeling confident, then please do, yeah, hang out with us. Um, and just a little reminder that um, next week, um, we decided that we're going to do, um, we, well, I know that was the point, wasn't it? We couldn't decide, could we, what we wanted to cook next week. So we thought we'd ask you to put in the chat. Someone's coming and we need that. I know. Oh, it's coming. Yeah. Should we let her in? We'll leave her hanging. <laughs> Should we let her in? She can answer too. So we had two options for next week, didn't we? What, we, what were the options that we thought we might do next week? Cheesy middle meatballs. Melty middle meatballs or... <laughs> whoa, 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 oh, she's squashing a friend. <laughs> Melty middle meatballs next week or... What did you think? Or sausage rolls. So give us a, a quick message, gang. Let me know what what you think that you would prefer to do next week, the cheesy melty middle meatballs or sausage rolls. Sausage rolls would be really great to make and then have maybe for lunch the next day with family or if we make the melty middle meatballs. You could have that for dinner with pasta. Have it for dinner with pasta and we'll do spaghetti um, and a quick tomato sauce and melty middle meatballs. And they're super simple. They are, they are super simple. And maybe if they take too quick we can make something else with them, like pizza wheels or something. Absolutely, absolutely. Ooh, we've got, we've got, ooh, we vote meatballs. We've got to vote for the meatballs. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll see what people, what people think. And then another one that we thought we would do, um, I wonder if anyone's interested in finding out 
how to make butter. Yes, or cheese. That's and cheese. cheese. We could do a class where we learn how to make butter from cream um, and how to make cheese from milk. Oh, oh, we've got someone saying they like the sound of sausage rolls. <gasps> no. Yeah, oh, but meatballs. another yes to meatballs. Yes, yes. Another yes, yes to meatballs. <laughs> another vote for the meatballs. Yes. Well, they were sort of your invention. I love that idea. We're going to make meatballs really simply using sausages. They were actually just. Oh, well, that's right. We did figure out, actually, they were a bit of her big brother's idea as well. She, he made them a while ago. Um, and then we're going to put mozzarella in the middle of the meatballs um, and then roast them so that when you, um, they're nice and crispy on the outside and then we cut them in the middle, they ooze out of the mozzarella in the middle. Ooh, how about if you want the meatballs, Put thumbs up. If you want the sausage rolls, put clap. Ah, in the chat, in the in, in the, the reactions. in the reactions at the bottom. There you go. We've got a thumbs up. We've got a thumbs up yes, from the yes. tiles. Yes. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, it's going to be a tricky one. It's going to be a tricky one to decide. All right. Well, we'll figure it out and then let everybody know. Um, what we're going to do next week. Sure. We still need to put this one in. Yeah, we are, we are, we are. So we've got, that's our second one. Lovely, lovely. And then the other one. Do you want to lay it in? Does anybody struggling with, the, um, with their frying pan being dry? They got sticky bits that are starting to catch and burn and smoke. If you do, don't worry. Just use your spatula to scrape them off and gently lift them to the side and maybe put them on a cold plate. Do you want to bring the flatbreads over so that everyone can see our end result? Oh, this is a dangerous idea. Here you go. Well done. There we go. All right, so there's our pretty, we call it the granny bowl. A pretty granny bowl. Because our granny made it. My, right. granny, my granny made it. Her That's mama. Right. Her my mummy. mama. My mama made it. Her mummy, my granny. That's right. Oh gosh, they look good. Do you know what? Do you want to crack into one? So as long as you don't lose concentration and let your flatbread in the frying pan burn, go ahead and have a taste. That's brilliant. Look at look at look at what they can see. It's literally just your back. <laughs> okay, disgusting. No? What do you think? Two thumbs up. Cool. So we make flatbreads quite a lot in this house, but we don't usually use this recipe. But I wanted to show you this one because it's so simple to do when you're short on time because you don't have to wait for hours and hours for it to prove and rise and do all the things that a yeast based one needs but also if anybody is interested in doing one of those classes just let me know and as usual if anybody's had a lovely time in the class please do go and have a look at the work that cook 19 are doing and that Refertorio Felix are doing when we're doing all of these classes for free just to raise some awareness and raise some funds for the incredible work that they're doing because whilst we are lucky enough oh look that's a great puffy one all right I'm guessing no, no. look how cool and puffy that one is that's because I didn't really fatten it out that much oh cool um they're doing amazing work well we're lucky enough to have lots of food in our homes lots of people aren't so lucky and those two charities are making incredible, incredible sacrifices um, to make sure that everybody has access to food, no matter where they are or what their job is or where their home is or where their home is not. Um, they're even delivering school meals to kids at the moment um, who usually would only get their one meal a day when they're at school, can you imagine? Anyway, there we go.
I think that's it, Dot. Right, lovely people. Hope you enjoyed that. Take Thank care. Thank you so much. We really, really enjoyed that. Thank you. Oh, have a great, great week, guys. Thank you. You're so welcome. I vote meatballs. You vote meatballs. Well, we'll take a look at the end and see, see how many thumbs up and how many. Uh, unless there's somebody there that can top them up. Can anybody oh. see? You know which one wins? Okay. Lovely. Lovely. Delicious. He says well done. Oh. He's still doing it. Thank you. You're so welcome, sweetheart. Enjoy. I hope that everybody gets to feed their families tonight with something instead of cake. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. See you very soon. Take care. And we'll let you know which one we choose to do next week based on the votes. Bye! Bye. It's delicious. That's lucky. <laughs>